What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today I have a special vlog for you guys because I have a live model, his name is Nico. It's a men's cut, uh, it's got disconnection, all kinds of fun stuff going on in the haircut. Also, a bunch of things that I wouldn't have personally done to his haircut, so I'm gonna make some adjustments to it as I go. This is definitely a work in progress. Um, but I wanna kinda show you guys that process because we get a lot of clients coming in that have haircuts that are not so perfect and we have to make adjustments to it to start it on the track to being the way that you would wanna cut it in the salon. So I know you guys are gonna like it because of all the adjustments that we're gonna make to the haircut. So we're gonna get started. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. All right guys, so this is Nico, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by assessing his hair. I've never cut his hair before, um, so like I said in the beginning, this is gonna be some adjustments that we're gonna make to the haircut. So I look at the hairline, I look at how his hair grows, and I start talking to him about lengths that he wants to keep on the top and how short he wants the sides and all of that. Now we're gonna go in, we're gonna shampoo him. This is the He's a 10 uh, shampoo, uh, three in one shampoo, conditioner, body wash, um, they sent this to me. It's the first time I've used it, uh, but I wanted to try it out. Definitely left his hair feeling nice and soft, cleansed the hair really well. I think the most important thing as a guy is to have a nice deep cleansing shampoo, uh, especially if you use a lot of products. So I'm sure you guys have heard of It's a 10. Well, this is He's a 10, so brand new product, and I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, like I said, the three-in-one shampoo, they also sent me a gel and a styling cream uh, to put on the hair at the end. So we're going to use those products to style. So when I looked at Nico's haircut and I sectioned it all off, you can see that um, the way that they sectioned the top, whoever previously cut his hair, um, it was very symmetrical in the, in the top, but in the back it kind of goes asymmetrical. So the part wasn't exactly the way that I would want it. So what I'm going to do is as I cut the hair, I'm going to build up that weight line on the right hand side to start growing the hair a little bit. Nico also said to me right away, was that he wanted to do kind of a top knot on his hair. That was his goal. So I'm gonna keep the top nice and long. So we're gonna start off, I, I blew dry the hair after I shampooed it. So I shampooed it to get all of the stuff out of it and also work all those calyx out with the nice warm water. And then I go through and I blow dry with my comb to get all the hair going in the right direction. Just gives a smoother transition when you go in to do the slight fade on the hair or the graduation or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna use a few different techniques to create the sides of the haircut. I'm gonna start off using a clipper technique with a number two guard on the Andis Pro Alloy Clipper. Great thing about this clipper, if you guys don't know about it, it's a new clipper from Andis they sent me and it has um, a cooling technology to it so it doesn't get hot like the other clippers. So if you're doing multiple haircuts uh, in a row and your clipper gets tends to get pretty hot, this is a great clipper for that. It's also got a lot of power to it uh, when it goes in to cut the hair. So we're starting from the temple, working back down to the nape, using that two guard fully open. When I mean my open is the blade is at its longest point. So, uh, and using that two guard, like I said. So just working through, working with the grain, against the grain, just getting a nice smooth transition. What you'll notice about Nico's hair, you can see it right in his hairline, how that hair kind of curves and grows in different patterns. So it's really important that when you're going through with your clipper work, that you go at it with at different angles, just to get every bit of hair the same length as you're working through it. So just fine tuning the side. Now we're gonna move into the Andis Supra ZR. This video is not sponsored by Andis. The, it just happens that they like to send me clippers, which I really enjoy, so thank you, Andis. This is a cordless clipper, um, so I really love this one for the freedom that I have in the salon. It's also super powerful, has, I believe, five different speed settings, uh, so you can decide how much power, how fast you want that blade to move. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just go through and do some clipper over comb. Clipper over comb is something that I do quite a bit in the salon. Um, I'm using my YS Park 209 comb. I chose the white version of it because I'm working with darker hair. It just allows me to see that hair coming through a little bit easier. And I'm just working that graduated line that we're creating, kind of uh, layering it up a little bit and smoothing the transition from the short hair to the longer hair on the sides. So you could do that with a clipper guard as well. It's just not the way that I like to do it. I like to go through it with a uh, clipper over comb. The other thing I love about clipper over comb is the fact that um, there's different 
you know, highs and lows within somebody's head shape. There's divots in people's heads, so it creates shadows. So if you're doing clipper over comb, you can kind of go a little bit deeper when there's those shadows, so it helps transition that fade a little bit better. So now, now I'm assessing that part. So you can see how the part really works its way up towards the, the center crown of his head. I want that part to go a little bit more straight over, following the parietal ridge a little bit more, but that's unfortunately not how the haircut is. So um, I have to make some adjustments myself. So we go in, we do scissor over comb work throughout the sides, and I just leave it a little bit longer towards that back crown area. So then later on, once that grows out, I can start working it into the top of the haircut. So to create the top of the haircut, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. Like I said, he wants to wear it in a top knot in the very back. So I don't want, I want the hair to all be able to reach the back. So we're gonna create a almost triangular feel. So we're gonna push all that weight to the front um, and keep it nice and heavy so he can flip it back into the crown of his head. He could also tie it up if he wants to, but it's nice to have it not undone, like have it have a purpose. So I go through, just clean it up, and then we're gonna blow it dry. So now the reason I'm gonna blow it dry is because I wanna create some texture and make it a little bit lighter on the top of the head. Uh, Nico has very, very thick hair. So um, after I get through doing the details on the sides, what I'm gonna do is just go through and do some point cutting on the top. So this is trimmer over comb, just working some details around the edges of his haircut. Um, just keeping it nice and natural, I'm not trying to get fancy uh, with the sides of the haircut. Uh, you can see how that 209 comb will bend its way through the head shape. That's very helpful. Uh, like I said, the head has different highs and lows in it, so this comb kind of allows it to sink down in there and create those nice uh, beveled looks to it. So a little trimmer over comb, finishing up, fine-tuning the details, trying to keep it nice and natural in the back. Um, nice kind of rounded feel to it and taking it nice and nice and tight but not too tight I'm not trying to make this a skin fade um, some of you guys out there might like it if you're great at doing a skin fade go ahead um, no one's holding you back from that so now I'm gonna go through finish it off with some point cutting I'm actually using my pen slim scissor uh, for this portion of it so I did the blacksmith fit solid in the scissor over comb portion which was a seven inch scissor this is a six inch fine blade scissor thing I love about this is it does have a lot of power. It's nano powder metal, so it grips the hair, but it's nice and sleek, so it gets into the hair exactly the way that I want it. One of my favorite scissors, um, so it's a Mizutani Pen Slim 6-inch scissor. So I'm going nice and deep with that point cut as I work through my fingers, overdirecting everything to the very back. So as I'm point cutting, I'm bringing everything back to where I cut it or in the original part of the haircut. So I'm not trying to change the shape at all. Finishing up those details. This is just taking it a little bit tighter around the edges. Just keep it nice and soft. Now we're gonna do his eyebrows. I like doing the eyebrows with a scissor because I feel like I have a little bit more control um, and I feel like I'm cutting more one eyebrow at a time rather than going through with a clipper and taking off multiple at a time. So sometimes I'll use a trimmer, but for the most part I like to use a scissor to clean that up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some hair color to his hair because, and only because, his friends decided to bet him that he wouldn't frost his tips or something like that. So he decided to frost his own tips. So now the, the tips of his hair have blonde on them and that's all. So what I wanna do is get this back to normal. So I go through, this is Vibra Color. It's permanent hair color, but I'm using a 10 volume to keep it nice and soft. I didn't want the translucency of a demi-permanent color. So I just went in there and I'm using the Vibra Color to bring it back to his natural in the very back. I don't need highlights in the disconnected part of the back. It's already gonna have that kind of separation feel to it. So I do paint a little bit of extra color, even in parts that weren't colored, because I think as a rule, it's always good to add any of that color that you're already adding to it, add it in other places, just in case, just to soften uh, the feel of it. So now I'm gonna go through, this is with uh, Wella Free Lights, and I'm gonna paint some highlights in there. Now, um, he was up to highlights. Now, obviously he didn't need frosted tips, but if we just kind of balayage some uh, highlighted pieces, kind of hand paint some pieces in there, just gives it a nice fresh look to the cut. Kind of pulls it all together. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just taking uh, diagonal forward sections. You can really just pick pieces out that you're looking to highlight and paint freely throughout the top of the head. You're not trying to complicate this. Now the complicated part is how you paint the pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm taking bigger chunks of hair, holding them into a triangular shape, and then just painting the top surface of the hair color. The reason that I'm painting it back off of his face is because that's what you're gonna see when he pulls his hair back. Um, so I don't wanna paint the underneath. I wouldn't pull the hair forward towards his face when I'm painting it. So you can see I grab those big chunks, pinch them together with my fingers, just like you would do with women's hair, and then I paint uh, the edges and the top portion of the section and then allow that to lay over top. So this is a real quick, easy add-on for guys. And this is something that, you know, a lot of, I color 80% of the guys that get into my chair. And the reason is because I just do simple, quick techniques like this, and I don't make it a weird thing. It's just making nice, natural feeling looks to the guy's hair um, and doing it really quick. So for this, I would probably charge an extra $25, $30, uh, depending on where you are and where your area is. You could be more or less, but I base it on the amount of time it takes me. This took me literally five minutes to do, um, half an ounce of color, and, and I was done. Now I'm using the Minerva color processor. This is also great for guys because it allows you to process his hair in 10 minutes. So I process the entire thing in 10 minutes, rinse it out, and you have your final look. Just kind of rotates around the head, has a little heat feel to it, but it's also processing and allowing. You see how bright that highlight is? That was 10 minutes later, um, and there you go. So now we're gonna style it. This is the He's a 10 gel. Now that gel is coming out so slow. That's actually sped up. It's a very thick gel. Um, and I did like that. I like the shine that it, it gave. It smelled good um, and it had a nice hold. But then once I started to blow it dry, the thing I did like about this product a lot is that his hair had hold, but it didn't feel sticky. And that was really um, what I was hoping for when I went to style it. Because guy's hair, you don't want it to feel like it has a ton of product in it, uh, especially when you're blow drying it. So we're blow drying it to get it to lay exactly where we want it. Then what I'm gonna do is go in with the other shaping product and create the exact finished look that we're going for. But you can see the shine coming off of his hair. So this is the It's a 10 Miracle Pliable Paste. And I think the miracle about this product and what is really crazy about it, it smells good, first off, that's not the miracle though. The the feel of it in your hands feels like you know a little bit sticky, but then as soon as I got it in the hair, it has so much hold to it. Um, you could really mold the hair wherever you wanted it to, but it wasn't super greasy. So that was one of my favorite parts about the product. Uh, again, this isn't a sponsored video by them. They just sent me the product to try it out, uh, but I do really enjoy the product. I like the gel first and then putting this Miracle Pliable Paste in it um, to give it a nice finished look to the haircut. You can see those highlights popping through, uh, and that is our end result. So I hope you guys like the video. Definitely let me know. I uh, hope you like the little color add-in. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this. All right, guys, like always, if you like this cut, then hit that thumbs up button below. Also hit the subscribe button if you have not done that already. And I have two new announcements to make. If you're not a hairdresser and you watch this video and you're looking for a great hair salon to go to, then use our hairsalonlocator.com website. It's brand new. It's got salons that follow FSE and are a part of our FSE partnership program. So you can find a great salon to go to near you. We're adding new salons daily, so make sure you keep up to date on that. And if you're a hairdresser and you wanna be a part of the FSE partnership program, all you have to do is go to freesaloneducation.com, click the link, I'll put a link below for that. The FSE partner program is $19.99 a month. You get live classes monthly. You also get access to our super secret Facebook group. And also you can get put on our hairsalonlocator.com website so that people that watch these videos can find your salon out there as well, or you as a stylist individually. So remember, the link is below in the comments. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, post those in the comments below as well. I appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. And guys, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below because you could win this Vibrastrate iron 
good luck. Let me know in the comments below if you've subscribed. Thanks.